Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Imagine that you and your friend each have glasses of water. You have one half of a liter of water, and your friend has 500 milliliters of water. Now, you might think that those 500 milliliters are a lot more than your half of a liter, since you're talking about the number 500. But actually, they're the same amount of water. It's all about the different measurements. Today, we're going to be looking at different measures in the metric system. Buckle your seatbelt and get ready. Metric system, metric system. Aha, uh -huh, here it is. The metric system is the decimal system that uses liters, grams, and meters to measure volume, mass, and length. Just like our place value system, the metric system is a decimal system. This means that to convert or change units, we would multiply or divide by factors of 10. Let's quickly take a closer look at the metric system before we begin converting units. First come the base units. Uh, think of base units as the usual way we measure something. The liters are used to measure volume. Grams measure mass, and meters measure length. Volume is a measurement of how much space something takes up, and we usually think of liquids. Mass is a measurement of how much matter or stuff something has, and it's related to how much something weighs. And we use length to measure the distance between two points. But what if you need to measure something that's less than a liter, or something that weighs more than a thousand grams? Well, I guess you've never thought how many grams you weigh, have you? Well, yes, here come some other measurements. When you change the base units to larger or smaller units, you need to use some prefixes. Let's look at the lengths of different objects. The base unit for length is a meter. Did you know that this guitar is around a meter long? And so is this baseball bat. Let's say we want to measure something that's really short, like the length of our fingernail. It's obviously quite shorter than a meter. And so we need to use a smaller unit of measurement. Now look at the chart at the prefix milli. 1,000 millimeters is equal to one meter. Now that is pretty small. And millimeters is the best unit to measure a fingernail. In fact, the average fingernail is about 13 millimeters long. Now let's say you wanted to measure something a little longer, like the length of your finger. Now there's a better option than millimeters, and we're going to use the prefix centi, and measure it in centimeters. Remember how we said that each prefix is separated by a factor of 10? Well, that means one centimeter is 10 millimeters. An adult finger is about 11 centimeters long, just in case you were wondering. Now, let's say we want to measure the length between your house and your friend's house, who's just moved to another city. Even meters here are not going to do the job for us. We got to go with something bigger. So what would we use? You would want to use the prefix kilo and measure it in kilometers. Kilo is three spaces away from the base unit, and each space represents a factor of 10. So 10 times 10 times 10 gives us 1,000, meaning kilo is 1,000 times bigger than the base unit. In other words, there are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. A kilometer is a little less than a mile, just for your reference. So it makes sense that we'd want to measure in kilometers here. But did you notice that we skipped some of the prefixes? That's because they're not commonly used in America. You'll probably use them in science class, though, and the table makes it easy to see how each prefix changes by a factor of 10. In this lesson, we're going to focus on the prefixes of milli, centi, and kilo. These magical prefixes aren't just for measuring in meters, though. They're the same with grams, too. Let's try it out. We want to measure mass now. One gram weighs about the same as a paperclip. And in a baking recipe, you might see the ingredients listed in grams. Well, looking at the chart, you can see that a kilogram is 1,000 grams because the prefix kilo means 1,000. If you were to measure your own weight, you'd want to use kilograms. The average weight of a 9-year-old is about 28 kilograms. 
And while we could measure that in grams, that would be 28,000 grams. It's much more convenient to use kilograms in this case. If you wanted to measure the mass of a small insect though, you'd use milligrams. Looking at the chart again, milli is three spaces over from the base unit. So that's 1,000 times smaller. There are 1,000 milligrams in a gram. So milligrams are really pretty tiny. The average ant weighs about three milligrams. And what about volume? Volume uses liters. A large reusable water bottle is about one liter. When you have more liquid, like a pool, you're gonna use, yup, you guessed it, kiloliters. And when you have a smaller amount, like the amount of water in a test tube for science class, you'll probably use milliliters. Ooh, great job converting and using different measurements. We were able to compare different measures and know which type of measurement is most appropriate for measuring items. Great work. I look forward to measuring more with you in the next lesson.